people. Hello. Ooh, let me stop the music. Hello. Yeah, for a second this Wednesday, I was not going to say hello, but I'm saying hello. 15th of March. What's going on, people? Got a couple records I can show. Um, I got a couple used records yesterday. I went down to Homer's because when the uh, test pressings came in, they were just in that plastic shrink. They weren't, they didn't have covers at all. They just came like, just came like that. And I couldn't bear that. So I had to go down to Homer's and get some blank. I was hoping they'd have, you know, solid um, blank covers, but they didn't. I guess they do uh, at recycled, but I didn't want to travel that far just to get that. So I played this some more and I'm just super, super chuffed, super pleased, hoping to hear today um, what the expected um, manufacture date is for the RAF album. Very excited. But besides that, I am at the point of mastering tracks for the Derek Blake Cubby project, The Muse. The name of the album is The Muse. And um, just a few details need to be uh, taken care of. I am so sorry, folks. On some tracks, and then it'll be ready for uh, sending off to Disc Makers. That's who I'm using is Disc Makers. I've used a few different ones. But Disc Makers is pretty consistent on the quality. So that's what's up with that. One more thing about the music. So, a lot of my music is short. And I'm going ahead and... Um, pro not proposing, but saying to you folks that what's going on with this is a an approach you know it is a it is a thought out approach that I'm doing which is I'm calling it micros my approach to um, writing this music ambient otherwise is micros which is like pop music you get in you do what you need to do and you get out I can already anticipate that there'll be some folks who, when they hear the music or buy the CD, they'll say, it's too short. But I challenge you, is it really too short? Listen again. When this, when the piece was over, it was done, wasn't it? If it was that compelling, go back and play it again. Because what I found with some pieces, or actually what I found in general, is if the composition is not there in my mind about how, where it can should go further, then then it's done i'm done so most of the pieces on the album are between two and three minutes long and um in listening you know the fellas we agree it's all you need it's all you need so anyway more on that so when i went down and got the sleeves for this they had some um they had a couple of things in use i didn't buy any new had this already, but my my copy is, is was was water damaged, so I got was able to get a decent copy of Thoughts of War by Mark Shreve. I believe this is the first release on the Uniton label out of Norway. The label that brought us the band Fra Lippo Lippi, you know them? Good stuff. This is lovely electronic um, synthesizer work. It's uh, you know, that's that whole area of Edgar Froese or Edgar Fries, Klaus Schultz, Van Vangelis. This is really good. Thoughts of War, Mark Shreve, real good. Flowing, beautiful. I was happy to find that. I said, wow, I can upgrade. Awesome. In the used, they had this Bobby Previte album. Previte, Previte, however you say his name, New York. I associate him with the New York um, free jazz, or whatever you would call it, that scene. Uh, he's played with John Zorn a lot. And folks that I, again, like Bill Frizzell, Wayne Horvitz are on here, Joy Bar Barron. Claude's Late Morning. 
only listen to just a little bit of this, but again, I'm, I'm, he, he interests me not only as a drummer, but as a, as a writer. So my first um, impression of this was interesting for sure. And interesting doesn't really tell you much of anything, that word, except it's worth investigating. That I guess when I use that, that's what I mean by it. It's like, oh, this, you know, I didn't com completely gather what it was about on the first listen, but it's like, okay, this is, this is, uh, this is, this is cool. In the used section down there, the price was nice and low, so I went ahead and grabbed it for several reasons. The Art Van Dam Quintet. Keep going. On this record, Art Van Dam is playing accordion, which right on the surface you would think, I don't, not in, I'm not interested in accordion music. That's probably going to be corny. But a couple things. I, 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 it's on the MPS BAS, BASF label. It is a German import, which I'm fond of G import pressings, um, especially from the past. Then I look at the um, personnel, and he's got Joe Pass on guitar, Eberhard Weber on bass, okay, Kenny Clare on drums. Enough said, okay. And when I put this on, it was like what I expected. It's like you hear the accordion, it's kind of light and kind of up and sunny, but nice. It's like, wow, boy, I like this. And then is the interplay of those amazing musicians evident on the session? Very much so. So this was a, a nice surprise, you know, not just to get a import BASF from my collection, but to get a good jazz album, Art Van Dam on the accordion. Who'd have thought? I think I got one more. Did I? No, that was it. That was it. Yeah, that was it. And I purposely kept away from looking in the new record section just because, um, well, not just because, but, you know, reality. And anyway, I'm getting ready to um, get these CDs uh, made and stuff, so I need to. I'm looking here to see on my discography list if I missed. Oh, I did. I got another one. Let me see. Is it down here still? Earth Star. I got another Earth Star album. But you know, all of us have to watch our pennies, don't we? Anybody here rich that I know of? Where is it? I bought one more. Oh, okay. Well, here's a couple things. All right. Couple things again. This is like I say, just a kind of a dear diary. For a minute, I wasn't even going to get on here, so here I am. Just <laughs> deal with me, a little scattered. I also got this Earth Star, this synthesizer group. Um, I forget where they're from. On the Sky label, I like the Sky label. Not everything on the Sky label is high quality, but it's an interesting label. So whenever I see the records used, I buy them. And this is. Three out of four Earth Star records I now own. I don't have the very first one. Um, that cover is, um, I'd have used the back cover myself for the front. It's pretty good. Again, um, can't really say much about it. I just had a quick listen. The other, um, somebody's dying all the damn time. So yesterday, another uh, person that I've had crossed paths with, I found out passed away. Is it, yeah, Dix, Dix Denny of the Weirdos, brother of John Denny. That's the two of them on the cover. John up front and, and Dix with the glasses. The Weirdos, West Coast came out of the punk scene. We got the Neutron Bomb. It's almost like a hit. It's a punk hit. If you know punk, I bet you know that, you, you knew that song. We got the Neutron Bomb. Heard that, uh, unfortunately, Dix passed away, and um, young man, much younger than me, at least 10, 11 years younger than me, had the great opportunity to play a show with the Weirdos, RAF. We got to open for the Weirdos in 2015 here in Omaha. They came through, and um, it was a great show. They were really, really good people. I love it when I meet people on the scene who turn out to be decent, you know, because not everyone is decent. 
you know, I'm, I'm not going to diss anybody. I could, you know, <laughs> but I'll just say um, <clears throat> some positives, like the weirdos put on a great show, lots of energy, and just really nice people. I'm still, I'm, I'm friends with John Denny, the leader of the band. We connected, and on Facebook, we share social consciousness um, posts and stuff. He's a good man. Another band that surprised me right quick on the punk scene was Negative Approach. You would think with a name like that in their history that John, the leader, would be antisocial and shit. It's a stance. He's a great guy. Really nice. Really nice. So, that's what I have to... Oh, right, oh wait, should I have a slight morning headache? You know how you have those sometimes? Hey, Stephanie. Hey, family. Hey, Karim. If you watch this, to Adrian, if you watch this, hey. Hey, all of you friends and friends, folks that watch regularly and folks that don't. Hope you're doing okay. Um, with regard to the question about the uh, Stephen Greer thing, uh, it's um, just... Google it, you'll find it was it was the, the most recent one. Uh, Sean something's um, show, but it's like less than a month old. But if you watch almost any of Dr. Greer's um, interviews, he's giving you the same information, and there's only so much he can tell you. But the main thing that I was was commenting on, and that I I know and uh, watch happening all the time, which Nothing I can do about it, but I hate it, is how the status quo is never going to change, and the idea of actual social change for the betterment of the of the common man, that's just lip service. It's not happening. It'll happen from us, but it won't come from our leaders. It's real obvious to me, and, you know, and hearing Dr. Greer talk about, you know, how we can't get information, and how there's just decades of trillions who knows how many trillions of dollars have just disappeared into black projects and to this day we don't have any idea what's been done with trillions of dollars i mean f above and beyond the entire um uh budget of the of the united of the united states government and we don't know and that's that's our money and we don't know what's being done with it and I'm not into I'm not into theories, conspiracy theories at all. It just makes sense that the way things are going, there's a whole lot going on that we're not told, and there's a, probably a whole lot going on that if we knew it would blow our minds. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's been something going on for years with some sort of uh, other presence here. I'll put it like that, where they you know. Maybe they're just like us, you know, you know, first people they run into and they're able to run a game on, oh, oh, we're the ones you want to talk to. We're the leaders. Hey, hey, don't go no further. could be like that, you know. I don't know, but um, that's what I was gathering from Dr. Greer. It's like he's saying it like I see it, which is, you know, folks that got money and power run things, and it's not anybody we know. It ain't the president. <laughs> Okay? All right. Talk to you later.